The Boston Celtics have been blessed with strong leadership for the last 20 years. With Doc Rivers in control from 2004 to 2013, he guided the Celtics to two championship appearances and a victory in 08. Brad Stevens was a great successor to Rivers, leading the Celtics to several Eastern Conference Finals and helping underdog teams exceed expectations in his eight years as the head coach. With Stevens elevated to a management position, he made the call to bring in Ime Udoka. Udoka had a bizarre first season to say the least, with a painfully slow start followed by one of the best midseason turnarounds in recent history as the Celtics grinded their way back to the finals. Time will tell how high he can climb up the coaching ladder, but as a rookie, Udoka was arguably top five. For the majority of Brad Stevens' tenure, he was widely considered top five himself. While there are some other overlaps between the two, such as roster personnel and play calls, there happen to be several differences in both the basketball philosophy and the character of the pair. With that said, the point of this video is not to say one is better than the other, but to offer a deeper look at their methods and how some of Udoka's changes amplified the team's best players. To accomplish that, let's start with the offense. Ime Udoka is a quotable guy. One of his most memorable ones came during the introductory press conference where he said, Looked at the numbers overall, sorry to mention this Brad, but 27th in assists last year. We want to have more team basketball there. Udoka wanted more team basketball, and that's what he got. In 2021, with Stevens in command, the Celtics made 284.7 passes with 23.5 assists per game. Flash forward to 2022, and both figures increased, with passes rising to 289 and assists to 24.9. To get the full idea of Udoka Ball, Boston's New Year's stats are where you should look. In the 46 games that marked the Celtics' midseason turnaround, they averaged 26.5 assists per game, which would have been the sixth best figure in the league between the Warriors and the Grizzlies. The difference, you might ask? Two things, creative off-ball movement and extra passes. Now don't get me wrong, Stevens had some plays and he was especially strong at drawing up out-of-bounds sets. However, the actions could be a bit predictable and harmless. This is a double pin down for Jalen Brown, but the spacing is horrific. You've got Tatum posting up and Jeff Teague initiating from a step inside the three-point line. Again, pin down for Brown with Tatum posting up on the opposite side. Sure, it seems like two good options, but neither is very threatening with a lack of spacing. Compare this to Udoka's usage of the pin down, where there are many different variations to throw off the defense. Here's an example. Tatum and Rob come to set a double pin down for Grant, but Grant curls in and positions himself as if he's the screener. Herder takes the bait and Smart drops in a pass for the easy dunk. Another one. Tatum uses the pin down this time, but Rob slips the second screen. Instead of breaking directly to the rim, he takes a slight step toward Horford and sends Jeremy Grant to no man's land. This time, it's just a single pin down for Tatum. Or is it? Desmond Bain seems to think so, working to get over the top, but Tatum cuts inside to screen off Horford's man, freeing him to pop out for three. Part of the issue with Stevens' offense is the absence of movement on the other side. He may regularly has players screen for each other on the weak side, even if they're not involved, because it limits the help and keeps defenders honest. Notice how the screen from White and Tatum completely removes the help of Hero or Tucker. Defenses are simply too smart for basic actions to consistently work, which is why these adjustments are so important. The other area that I mentioned was the extra pass, the perfect combination of chemistry, unselfishness, and execution that every elite team has to master. Udoka's Celtics are well on their way to mastering that. Under Stevens, especially at the end of his career, the ball had a tendency to stick and possessions would resort to iso ball, which is fine if it's more deliberate with adequate spacing. Generally, that wasn't the case with players standing around to watch. In comes Udoka and the unselfishness shined. The numbers show this change clearly when looking at secondary assists. For those who don't know, a secondary assist is the pass that leads directly to an assist. In 2021, Steven Celtics averaged 2.6 secondary assists per game, good for the 25th best mark in the league. Doka bumped that up to 4 per game, which ranked 2nd in the league this year. 
Those numbers matter when it visibly lines up with the film, as players had no problem passing up a decent shot for a better one. It's no longer a my turn, your turn situation. Everybody eats. That's the Udoka way. Developing this type of culture is essential because it'll carry on regardless of who's wearing a green jersey. There's plenty of other things we could look at, but for the sake of your time and my sanity, let's move on to the defense. I want to make this clear. Stevens was an excellent defensive coach. He got the most out of every team and consistently ranked in the top 10 for defensive rating. So the differences we explore in this section are less about his shortcomings and more about Udoka's vision for the team. He may implemented a switching scheme that was trouble for even the best offenses. It wasn't an immediate success because players had to buy in and know their responsibility, but the signs were there from the start. Most teams switch from time to time, Stevens included, but very few do it as frequently or interestingly as Udoka. Stevens was more conservative with his switching, opting to let his defenders chase a shooter around a set of screens, while Udoka had his team talk through them and help each other out. This keeps players aware and ready to cover for their guys at all time. You can see the contrast of that here, where Smart isn't in position to switch with Jalen. He covers that up with a strong closeout though. This point leads us to the fun part of the system where Robert Williams is fully optimized. Rob is capable of defending on an island, but he's most valuable protecting the rim. To keep him in position to do that, his teammates are always ready to switch him out of the action. It was a small change, but played into Williams' strengths and simplified his responsibility, allowing him to become a game-changing rim protector that can switch out when needed and make you think twice about that pull-up jumper. Another important difference was giving Al Horford more freedom defensively. Even at 35 years old, you have a hard time finding many defenders that are as versatile as Horford, and we saw that truly unlocked last season. You have to look back a few years to see how Horford was utilized under Stevens, but to sum it up, a lot of drop coverage. This hid the fact that Big Al can move and is a very strong ISO defender. The stats capture this clearly. In 2019, Horford was defending 1.4 isolations per game and giving up a solid .77 points per possession on 37% shooting. With Udoka letting him switch a bit more, the possessions rose to 2.5 per game as the big man gave up .73 points per possession on just 33.8%. It becomes almost a gambit for Udoka because ball handlers see Horford on them and believe that's a mismatch, but it rarely is. He doesn't overreact to much and almost always puts up a good contest. Al and Rob transitioned effortlessly into this new system, but they weren't the only ones. In fact, the entire roster thrived. For Brown and Tatum, they were no longer required to use up their energy chasing around shooters and could use their size and athleticism to guard up or down positionally. Grant Williams was able to show off his exceptional versatility making a name for himself as someone that can defend both skilled and forceful players. Pritchard and White didn't shy away from taking on bigger matchups and used their peskiness to give them trouble. Speaking of trouble, Marcus Smart became the conductor of it all, calling out switches and locking down anyone on the way to his rightful title as the Defensive Player of the Year. As I said before, Udoka knows how to amplify his best players, but you can only coach who is on your team. And for that, Stevens deserves credit because he helped the team's core grow as a coach and brought in great fits for Udoka's vision as a GM. For the same reason, it's unfair to pin all of these differences on Stevens. He worked with the personnel he had and played through his stars. Nevertheless, this change was needed and gave the Celtics a new look that worked wonders and should have them ready for a big year next season. Thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content and let me know what other changes you've noticed between the two coaches. Peace.